Hello Fab Fans, my name is Josh and this is episode 6. Today we'll be making this three phase pillow drill, run from that single phase VFT. Danger, danger. High so let's run the tape. On today's episode, we'll be looking into an issue that pretty much every small workshop owner has faced at some point, which is adding three-phase machines into a shop that only has single-phase supply. As a workshop grows, moving away from smaller, single-phase machines is almost inevitable. With this issue in mind, what options do we have for adding these larger, higher voltage pieces of equipment? Our first solve would be to simply add a three-phase supply to the workshop. But as easy as this sounds, it would be an extremely costly and disruptive option for the workshop and people around it. Our second option would be to simply swap out the three-phase motor for a single-phase one. And this was my original plan for this machine, but then I got that. And that is the disc sander, which also requires a three-phase supply. With adding a dedicated three-phase supply to the workshop not really being viable, and trying to avoid multiple motor changes on these machines, we come to our third option, which is that. And that is a VFD, or Variable Frequency Drive. This magical little box takes our single 240 volt input and gives us a three phase 220 volt output. This unit also provides control over the frequency at which our output phases are delivered and allows us to control the motor speed directly via a rotary switch. Just to make sure you guys don't confuse this, that is a VFD. This is a VSD, or Variable Speed Drive. These are only used on DC motors and simply alter the voltage delivered to the motor as it's running, which in turn alters its speed, like this. So we go very slow. Or we can go quite fast, simply via this potentiometer. So now we know this little fella is working as it should, I'll give you a quick glimpse into the wiring, and you can see just how simple these things are to set up. Although this bit of kit can do some rather clever things, we simply need to add a power input and output for what we are trying to achieve. Everything here is nicely labelled, with a pretty concise set of instructions also included with the machine just to make life that little bit easier. With our three pin socket now in place, can we simply put a plug on this and whack her in? I'm not so sure, but we're gonna check anyway. Our first task here is to work out which wire is being used for each phase. Normally, these will be either color coded or numbered, but with this machine being a bit of an old timer, we have to investigate and work this out for ourselves. Luckily, this is a pretty simple job, and only requires us to find where the cables are running to, give each one a yank, and see what moves at the other end. Now we have our phases quickly labelled, we can get this plug wired up. Now that our plug's on, we're going to give it a quick plug in and see what happens. the VFD up to capacity. <laughs> so that wasn't meant to work. <laughs> Generally with VFDs, they're not a fan of the original switch gear. You have to bypass it or remove it completely and wire straight into the motor, then use all the settings and buttons 
on the VFD itself for your start stop your control forward reverse anything else that the machine normally does directly via a switch I went through this with the disc sander and it caused me quite a bit of grief but I got there in the end to see that I can just plug this in and she's away it's <laughs> I've been putting it off for three years I should have just had a go <laughs> but it's also cut this week's episode pretty much in half so that's it that's as simple as they are apparently <laughs> so I think I've got to give a little bit of an apology here and say sorry for making that look so easy <laughs> because it never is if you're here looking for a solve for a VFD problem my main bit of advice would be get rid of all the switch gear make sure your motor is in the delta configuration but double check that in the instruction manual and then wire it straight into the motor mount the VFD close to where you're working so you can get it all the controls and you'll be away they are a very good bit of kit I think that one was only around the 90 pounds mark not really a huge investment at all for what it achieves but yeah that's it for this week so I'm not going to do a this and that this week I'm going to instead run through with the pin press for next week I had a couple of ideas that have sprung to mind since then so that's all drawn up that's going to be laser cut and then at the end of that I'll give you a this and that which I think some of you are going to quite enjoy and it's going to be quite a hard choice so that's it for today thank you very much for watching don't forget to like comment and subscribe to the channel and we'll see you next week.